Hello traders and welcome to our Fibonacci trading uh, webinar with Roy Cousin. Please give me some okay guys, you can hear me. And I'm sending uh, my warm regards from Canada. Well, not so warm here, not so warm, <laughs> but uh, the regards are good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Very good, guys. Yeah, thank you very much for making that. I really appreciate that. The webinar is, of course, uh, recorded. So share with us where are uh, you from today? Uh, we have here uh, Yorkshire, UK. We have Brazil. We have Serbia, Montreal, London, Syria, Texas. All right, we are everywhere. <laughs> That's good. Rui, where are you today? Well, I'm uh, I'm in my uh, my home, my home, uh, my home place. Uh, at uh, speaking uh, from uh, Re the Dominican Republic, believe uh, it or not. I'm somewhere in Central America. I'm jealous. I I would give yeah, anything I can right now for some uh, uh, sun. Uh, Lots of sun. Yeah, <laughs> sun and some, yeah. some, some time yeah. on the beaches. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, once again, hi, guys. Um, what is expected today and who is Roy? So first of all, I would like to introduce Roy. I met Roy. Roy, correct me, please, if I'm wrong. We know each other from 2007 or eight. Uh, I think it was a bit later, probably 2009, uh, after I came after back the crisis from London. Or before? <laughs> after the crisis, after right after the crisis. Yeah. So I met Rui That's when uh, we both were working uh, for uh, broker houses uh, back then. Um, he impressed me right away. I was still uh, like in my diapers. He impressed me very much with, uh, with his knowledge uh, about Fibonacci and not just. Uh, I learned from him a lot, and we since then everyone chose a bit of uh, different uh, uh, directions. We always remain good friends, always uh, keep uh, keep in touch. We met several months ago, right? We met several months ago. Very true, very true, absolutely. Uh, we will meet again in several months, so <laughs> that's <laughs> very good. So besides being a very good friend, Roy is a master of Fibonacci uh, and he developed his own unique approaches to the Fibonacci trading, something that I don't know to do. Um, like, you know, every trader has his or her own uh, niche. My niche always was and remains the money flow of cycles and uh, divergences, convergences. Roy is a master of Fibonacci. I think he has tons of quality uh, uh, to and value to offer to our community. Uh, today, Rui will uh, introduce uh, exactly that, his Fibonacci um, systems, his Fibonacci uh, usage, how he does that, uh, and uh, where does that work the best and why. Um, I am sure you will enjoy that, Rui. Uh, after after introducing all that, we will stop and uh, we um, will answer your questions. So uh, what I will request from you guys uh, is attention, focus, uh, uh, patience. Uh, if you ask question, it uh -huh. will be replied later on. Okay, so please have some uh, some patience. Um, at the end, Rui will, of course, share where you can uh, go and learn in complete depth the uh, Fibonacci system with his and with himself. He will give his contacts. So if you have any question, you can, of course, um, ask without uh, any hesitation. And uh, I'm sure this is going to be an amazing webinar. I know the material, so <laughs> I know the quality <laughs> and how, how amazing it is. Roy, thank you very much for making it uh, today. And um, despite all the, the, the seductions you have in the uh, <laughs> Republic Dominican with the beaches and uh, some uh, <laughs> martinis <laughs> with ice. So, oh, it's my uh, pleasure, really. I, I, I pass the control to you guys. Enjoy, Roy. Um, good luck. And uh, I wish wonderful time to everyone. 
Thank you very much, my friend, my dear friend. Uh, first of all, um, I would like to thank you. Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, we met a long time ago and uh, I have to return uh, please, please, this compliment. Please, please excuse me for interrupting. Um, just make, you have the screen, yeah. uh, show screen button. So when you are ready with uh, with your um, on your side, please hit it so everyone can see your uh, your screen, your charts. All right, just a sec. No problem. I have a screenshot here. No, no screenshot, no screenshot. You have the show the play button. Show screen. Where is that? Uh, just a sec. You will make it. You will make it. <laughs> I think yeah. Now you look. Oh, now you're seeing me. All right. Yep. So it's good. not that. You 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 have. Uh, where is that? Where is that button? You have the audience view. You have sharing. Sharing. Yes. Inside sharing, click the sharing, and then there should be show screen. Uh -huh. Like a play button. No, I don't have that. Okay, I may have that. Let's see. Check out, please, on Skype. Well, we can look at you alternatively. <laughs> <laughs> Just a second. All right. All right, how's that? Uh, Can you see now? Can you see my screen now? Yes. Very good. Now you don't have to use the webcam. Yes. Uh, I think if you use the webcam, it will right. just take your uh, board away, so. All right, I think we're good. Yep. All right. Yep. <laughs> All right, so hit it and good luck. All right, just a sec. I'll just um, let me see what's going on here. What is this? Okay. All right, I think we're good to go. It looks like. So you hear me well? Perfect. Good. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, just to introduce myself uh, and uh, continue on, uh, on Vlad's uh, introduction. So, yeah, we met a long time ago, and I was also quite impressed with, uh, with Vlad, and uh, since then we became good friends, and uh, uh, we shared lots of ideas along the years. Uh, so it's, it's really a great, uh, a great honor for me to, uh, to be here with you guys and uh, to, work, uh, to work again with, uh, with Vlad. Uh, it, it all started uh, probably around uh, 16 years ago uh, when I was uh, at, uh, you know, 22, a very young guy. Uh, I opened my first uh, foreign exchange account. Uh, I mean, needless to say, I blew it uh, in, in a few months, but uh, uh, that was the first, uh, you know, the first step uh, in, this, uh, in this journey. And uh, you know, very, very in very early stages, I realized that uh, it is so much more to it. You know, uh, just reading the you know the the, the popular and common technical anal analysis books is not just is, is not good enough. Uh, I had to uh, I had to learn that obviously the hard way in the first year or two, uh, and that's why I became I decided to become an expert. Uh, on the subject of technical analysis, which uh, I thought to be uh, probably one of the solutions uh, for successful trading, I mean, uh, consistent uh, successful trading. So I, uh, I, I just went on to, uh, to become, uh, you know, a master, so to speak, in technical analysis. Uh, I went on to, uh, to study the subject of point of view. So, uh, uh, with the International Federation of Technical Analysis. And, uh, but, you know, just after I became an expert, 
I discovered that, uh, you know, to my disappointment, I discovered that 95% uh, of the technical analysis uh, discipline is, uh, is just bullshit. Uh, you know, it not only doesn't help you, but it's, it will also uh, mislead you. Uh, and uh, later on, I, I actually understood that, uh, you know, if something is out there for everyone to see and use, it's probably going to fail, right? Because if it was a successful uh, tool, for example, that could be used by everyone, then everyone would have been, you know, billionaires and millionaires. And we know, we already know that the market is not uh, working like that. So I realized that it has to be something deeper than that, right? It has to be something that I need to develop and something that I need to uh, make lots of trial and error until I hit it, until I understand something which will be unique and original, uh, which could be based on some of the uh, common elements, right? So um, I, just, uh, I just took that journey and started to study the actual charts for days and months uh, until I found out, I kind of discovered uh, an interesting phenomenon. Uh, it was ba based on the Fibonacci. Uh, I actually was quite impressed by the Fibonacci uh, element in the technical analysis. I, I kind of uh, noticed that it, ha it, it actually holds some interesting values, uh, mostly because it's not, a, it's not about trading. The Fibonacci sequence uh, is, is, is about the universe. It's, it's, you know, it's the laws of the universe. It's like a physical law. It's far beyond the market. And that's what drew my attention to it because I noticed that it has effect in every single aspect in life itself. So I basically, tried, basically just uh, drilled into it seriously deep and discovered this unique sequence, this, these unique numbers, uh, which allowed me to later on dis uh, discover this crazy phenomenon which I call the C-matrix phenomenon, which is basically, um, uh, well, you know what, let's go ahead, I'll just show you a few, uh, a few cases uh, so, uh, so you'll know so you see how, what I'm talking about. Basically, um, this is the Bitcoin, right? This is the Bitcoin uh, versus the US dollar. Um, and basically what you have in market uh, is two conditions. The market is either uh, in a strong, basically one-sided, you know, one direction trend, or it's consolidating. When it, whenever it's consolidating, that's where, the, that's the, that's where the, basically the conditions change from trending into what I call sideways movement or trading range. Uh, there's lots of names for it, but uh, these are the two conditions the market is in. Now I found out that some of the numbers in the Fibonacci can allow me to basically to contain the, con the consolidation phases. So right now I'm not talking about these long trends, but rather I'm talking about the sideways movement that usually follows any type of trend. And I found out that these numbers, when applied uh, in a very specific way, can basically contain the whole side of this movement and give me a very strong predictive system and also a very strong uh, risk management system which is built in the setup. In that way, I can basically break down the particular legs within that sideways movement. All right, so. Uh, the system is called C-matrix, and it's only used when I see, when I, when I can uh, identify a sideways movement, right? I can identify a consolidation of the market. But it goes beyond that, because there's the elements of the Fibonacci itself. So, for example, if I don't, if, if I look at the Bitcoin, right? I mean, the Bitcoin is an interesting uh, case study. And I'm going to give you a little bit, um, you know, I'm going to share with you the way I work, right? I'm going to give you some elements of uh, the system because the system is very comprehensive. I call it the symmetric system, but it also involves uh, more elements. Uh, it depends on the condition of the market, right? It's very, uh, it's very dependent on the condition of the market. For example, 
uh, in a long-term trend, such as we had in the Bitcoin, until it hits the 20,000 level, there was no trading range to, to be found. There was no sideways movement. There was only one direction, very strong upside movement, right? So in that case, the C matrix is very much um, unusable. What I can use is different elements of the Fibonacci. So let me show you how I was able. I mean, I got in the, the Bitcoin where, is, where it was about 6,500. And uh, initially I bought just, to, you know, I just, to, I established a small holding, but as it kept going uh, upwards, I kept increasing my position. And um, at, the, at the level of 10,000, I had a nice position in place. And that's where I stopped increasing the position because I thought that the Bitcoin was getting, uh, you know, basically expensive or too high. Uh, I didn't even dream that it would go all the way to 20,000, and I believe nobody did, right? But uh, my, the problem was, the problem was I had to know where is the best place to drop the Bitcoin, because I knew that after such a strong upside movement at some point, there's going to be a huge downside correction like it always is. So here the main challenge was not to find, you know, the best, entry because I was already in. in. In this case, the problem was to find the best exit or, you know, you can't, you can't uh, ask for uh, the tip of the, the movement, right? Yeah, that, that would be uh, arrogant for me to, to, to try to, to aim for. But, rel you know, relatively uh, good portion of the upside movement, that's definitely something I'm interested in. So, um, Here's what I did. I mean, I was I was basically riding this upside movement and I was waiting for the signal. I was waiting for the signal to come from um, from from the price itself. Let me remove the C matrix here. I'll, I'll clean it a little bit. And here's what I do when I don't have when I only have like a strong, you know, very dominant uh, one way trend where I have my position in place and I want to know where is the right timing to sell, to sell everything, basically to, to, you know, to cash in. And here's what I do usually when I, find, when I find this situation. I wait patiently for the market to give me a strong signal. And what I do is I use an advanced technique of the Fibonacci. I call that the Fibonacci projection diversion technique, all right? The, the Fibonacci, Projection diversion, the FPD. Now, uh, this is what I do. All right, um, I wait for an opportunity to gauge the potential upside movement of the last segment. All right, try to bear with me. I know it might be a little bit complicated at first, but here's what I do. You see this upside movement, right, all the way to 18, almost 18,000, right, and then came this drop. Now, this drop is very important, right? Because this drop is a local direction followed by another upside segment. When I notice this drop here, and I do this with every drop, by the way. So what I did was um, I applied the Fibonacci projection analysis. Take a look at that. Now, the most important level you want to take from the projection analysis well, there are two levels, to be honest. The first is the 1.236, very important one. But even more important is the 1.618, right? The 61.8, that's, you know, the golden rate of the, that's the most important number in the Fibonacci sequence. But it, you, you're probably familiar with this level coming from the corrective side, right? The 0 0.618 or what you call the 61.8%. Right now, this is the opposite. This is the the anti the, the anti kind of uh, 61.8. This is the 161.8 percent, right? And you uh, basically you you create it by uh, by giving it the value of 1.618. So let me just uh, mark this level here. For uh, there you go. It's right there. Now I can take it off, right? Too many colors. Now, 
here's what I did, right? So I'm looking for these projection levels that I can know from advance that price is gonna bump into these levels. These levels are very strong resistance, very, very strong. It doesn't surprise me at all that price was just scratching that level and completely collapsing. Now, I'm not using this element as the only element to determine, you know, a, you know, a tipping point in this case. It's not enough. So I combine it with the, a divergent technique, right? Divergence technique. Vlad knows a lot about divergence, far more than, than me. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm more so simplistic in my view. I'm just looking for another layer of confidence because I already suspect at this point, right, where price just hit the 161.8, I, I am very, I'm very suspicious that we're going to have here a serious downside correction. So what I did was combine an RSI, Relative Strength Index, in its simplest form, right? The default 14 level, just to see if I can find an interesting divergence right on that top, right where price hits my projection level. And lo and behold, that's exactly what I noticed right there. Take a look at this negative divergence. We had a high, although price uh, registered uh, lower high, right? We had a high high and then a lower high on the RSI while we had a higher high on the chart itself. So that was a clear negative divergence happening right after it hits my target. So obviously I didn't act immediately because in order for me to actually notice this, you know, uh, negative diversion, I had to wait a little bit. So I actually waited a few more days and got out at 18,000 level. And ever since then, not only I got out, I actually flipped over and went into a short position. Because right after what, right after the first drop, price had started to enter this sideways movement. So at this point, exactly at this point, I switch my mode from a trend mode into a trading range mode. You know what I mean? So basically at this point, what I do is I just incorporate again the symmetric setup. Now here's the symmetric setup. And I said, I told you, the symmetric setup has the capacity to, um, to uh, well, to engulf the whole price movement as long as it's trading sideways. If it's not trading sideways, it will, it will also show you that it got broken and you don't, and you don't want to count on it any, for, for any time longer. So here's what I did uh, ever since I, you know, I cashed in, I, I made a big profit on the upside and now I started to go short on the Bitcoin. Now shorting the Bitcoin, uh, people think it may be complicated, but it's, it's actually not. Uh, you just go and buy Tether. Tether is the anti-Bitcoin. Right, you buy Tether, you basically go short on the Bitcoin. Right, it's very simple. So I started to amass Tether at this point, but I noticed that price was starting to enter into a sideways movement. So I, I wanted to see whether this level right there, this last level of the fence, take a look at this level right here, nine four nine seven. Right, this level. This level re re reflects the last support in the setup. And if it's broken, it tells you that uh, we are actually in a bearish market rather than a sideways market, right? So uh, I took a, a short trade until the, the level of 10,000. When it hits the 10,000, I basically closed my short position. And I made a nice movement from the level of uh, 15,000 that was. And then I wanted to see whether price is going to sustain this down, this sideways movement or it's gonna break and continue the bearish market. So it was clear to me that this was the test level, the main level which I was, you know, I kept my eyes very close on. The 9497 level right there. Now we can see the reaction we had here the previous occasion, but then of course um, it fell, it fell below, right? So it broke that level, and at that point, I knew that the bullish market is still on, so I didn't 
uh, buy back in. You know what I mean? I didn't buy back in. Now, here's how, how I, I'm going to give you some value here with regards to the Bitcoin, right? Uh, here's where I think it's going to go, all right? So right now, I mean, the RSI is irrelevant for me at this point. What I want to know is where is it most likely to go to? Where is it going to end? Right? So in this case, I'm using a very advanced technique of the Fibonacci. Now, one te the technique involves two measurements. One measurement is for the whole upside trend. Right? So I have to go back all the way and see where it kind of where it you know generated from where was the previous major low and you can see it was right here at the bottom so i'm going to basically i'm going to measure this whole upside movement what i want to see is where is the last level of correction uh can be found right the 76.4 let me show you how that works so obviously i take this whole upside movement all the way up and right there, take a look. This is the 76. These are the levels, right? These are, these are the corrections that the, the corrections level you wanna you wanna have in place always, always when you when you, when you, when you measure potential correction, right? Now um, the most important level by far, right? Now not not very few people know this, all right? Uh, it's it's a big misconception that uh, the 38.2 is a very important level. It's actually not. It's a misconception that the 50 level is important. It's really, really not, right? I don't even have that 50 level here. The most important levels, as far as I'm concerned, are the 23.6, which is the first one, and above all, the last one, the 76.4. That's the by far the most important level you can think of. All right. Now that level also reflects the last level of potential correction, meaning beyond that level, there is no correction anymore. There's a full-fledged downside reversal and a full-fledged downside trend. All right. So this level can always tell you whether we are still in a correction phase or the correction is basically um, it, it, it's not existent. There's a, there's a bearish market, right? So I use this level a lot, and you can see now where I'm gonna when I'm gonna take the setup out, you can see I still have this la this line right there because this is the line I'm aiming at, and I think that once we crossed the matrix level right there, and I knew that you know it is a bearish market rather than a sideways market, then I also knew to look for the cycle. Let's take a look at the cycle. Let's see. Um, let's see if I can use this pen here. Just a second. I just, yeah. Let's see. All right. So take a look at this. Um, we had the first drop. I think that was the first wave, right? Then we had this upside movement, right? I think that was the second wave. Then came the third wave. Then, of course, came the fourth wave. And right now, we are, in fact, in the fifth wave. The fifth wave is in the making. Now, here's the 76.4 last level of correction. So I, will, I, I, I strongly believe price will hit that level at least to the minimum. But at this point, I will kill my short position on the bitcoin and we'll start to think of flipping over right it definitely depends on the reaction we're going to have on that level but here's a, here's another interesting element i also add another measurement take a look at that this time it's the one it's the 1.236 remember that level which I said is a very important one on the correction side. It is, all of, it is also very important on the projection side. Now, here's what I look for. I look for a cluster. Cluster meaning two levels coming jointly, coming, uh, coming together, sometimes fall exactly on top of the other. Now, you see the level that is right here, right? Let me, let me place another horizontal line right there. There you go. Now I can take it off. Let's take it off. 
So you saw, basically, this is what I call a hybrid cluster. Hybrid cluster, it's hybrid because we have a projection level, right, 1.236 for the fourth wave, and we have a, a correction level, the 76.4 for the whole upside movement. Joined together, they form a cluster, and it is a hy hybrid cluster, and it is, it is the best cluster you can find. It is a not only a very strong support, a major support level, but it is also a very strong magnet. It will draw price to it and then repel it. All right, that's that's uh, that's the situation. Anyway, um, this is how I use, uh, for example, this is how I used uh, my system here, uh, the C-matrix on the Bitcoin and uh, other elements of the Fibonacci, right? But um, I want to show I want to show you that uh, these things work everywhere, right? Um, let's see how I can um, how I can delete these drawings. Let me see. Oh, simple. Okay. So um, this whole phenomenon of the sideways movement uh, and the symmetrics uh, phenomenon is basically applied. Uh, it, it can be applied everywhere in every market, right? I use it in the crypto market. I use it in the forex market. I also use it in the stock market. Um, for example, you're looking at uh, we had we had a major correction, right, in the stock market. Uh, this is the uh, Dow Jones, by the way. This is the Dow Jones, and um, looking at it from the long-term perspective, it looks pretty daunting, because um, if you count the waves here, right? I always use, by the way, uh, the Elliott wave. If I can count the waves uh, easily, I do it. If not, I I, I just I don't do that. I just, you know, I don't force counting. Counting has to be very clear. But it, it, whenever it is clear, it could be very helpful. So, for example, it's easy to see that this is the fourth, the first wave. That would be the second corrective wave, and then the third wave again, fourth all the way down and all the way up five. All right. Now you can say that, um, you know, all right, this is the fifth wave, but it's not necessarily the end of it, right? Price can actually go back up and continue this upside movement and we'll find the end of the you know the fifth wave to be much higher which is uh, you know it's a relevant argument what i suggest is when you use when you can use not only you can not always you can sometimes you can a lot of times uh you can use the symmetric setup in order to enhance you know the conviction because my conviction at this point is that we have a huge potential for you know an, an incredible downside correction right uh just the 38.2 will put you somewhere here 61.8 will put you somewhere here 70 76.4 will put you somewhere. the potential is huge especially when we're so high right so this is where i basically use the symmetric setup to figure out whether we're going to have here a serious bearish market so Take a look at the setup, right? It's very young in terms of, uh, in the sense that we only have here two legs. We have the first leg and we have the second leg. However, these levels are the most, probably the most, I mean, it, it is the, mo the, the most powerful uh, predictive system, support and resistance system that I've ever seen. And every single level here is very prominent. So just take a look at this level, for example, the 23.93 uh, here, right? 23.936. You actually have it to the very last point. It's very accurate. 23.936. This this is a major support, right? This is a major support. There's also a major support right below it, 22.784. So here's what I think is going to happen, right? Here's what I think is going to happen. It's going to continue to it's basically going to going to continue the sideways movement. Now, bear in mind, this is a weekly chart, right? Every single leg here is a few weeks time, right? This is a big time frame. By the way, I'm a, I'm a position trader in my in my nature. I'm not a day trader, so I use my I use the weekly chart as my basic chart, and I use the daily chart as my execution chart, right? Sometimes I go to the monthly chart. 
but these are the charts that I, I'm, I'm using. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm basically a position trader. So um, in this case, I can see that the, there's lots of potential for a few weeks where we're going to go up again pretty much where we were in the previous high, just according to the setup, but not also, not only according to the setup. I actually have a big, big hint right there. Now let me close up here and show you, uh, close in, sorry, and show you uh, what's going on right there. Take a look at, and these are, you know, these are weekly close. Uh, weekly close is very, very important. The daily close is where we start. There's nothing below that. The daily close is important. The weekly close is a confirmation factor. It is stronger. It is higher in terms of authority. The monthly close, it's the highest authority. That's the reconfirmation factor. All right. I know it could be, be it could be a bit a little overwhelming at first. Try to bear with me. Uh, but so yeah, you got that level right there, 20. 3936. I was focusing on that level. And I noticed two weeks ago there was a close below that level. Right? The close below that level. So I thought to myself, all right, the bear market, the bearish market may actually continue, but I knew that it has to break through the last level of the fence, right here, 22784. Instead, take a look at what happened here. This is quite remarkable. Where price basically gapped. And it's a serious gap, right? Gap from this close right here, all the way jumped, like jumped above that level, right? Jumped above the level. Take a look at the close here. Is 23.542, 23.542. The open here um, is 23.970, right? That's a that's a huge gap. This is a weekly chart. Yet again, I remind you. But not only that, it not only gapped up above that level, as you can see, it gives a huge respect, right? That level is a huge, huge level. And you can also see that the, at the beginning of the week, price was actually on the downside, breaking the level, trading well below that level, but coming close to the end of the week, take a look what happens, right? Price goes all the way, just leaves a little bit of a spike there and close on a positive note. But more remarkably than that, it's what happened in this current week, right? Price was actually trading much, much lower than this 23,936 level. It actually went, it's, it, you know, this is the nastiness of the market. This is why it, managed, it manages to topple 95% of the traders because it's a nasty behavior market, right? What it does, it just violently goes back again to the previous lows. It already knows, it, it is, I'm speaking as if it's a person, right? But it's not, obviously. But it, it is if, it already knows that there's lots of stop loss levels, right? Lots of stop loss levels below that low, lots of stop loss level below the previous low, because that's what usually people do. They buy and they put their stop loss level, you know, below the previous low. And that's what it does. It goes all the way being very nasty, takes all the stop loss levels, right? Now think about it, what are, what are these stop loss levels? These stop loss levels are sell execution orders, right? Selling orders, that's what they are. People that have, that have you know, uh, buy position, they have a stop loss, which is a sell order. So once that hits all of the sell orders, basically pushing out all of the stupid money, so to speak, then it, you know, this whole area, which was a strong level for uh, basically selling power, dries up. All the orders, all of the orders are executed. The whole area dries up. And guess what? Price is able to start moving upwards again, right? But this is just, just a part of it. What's mostly, mostly amazingly interesting to see is that price goes all the way back again to base itself above that C matrix level. This is why I find this every single time I, I see this, and I see this everywhere, you know, this stuff. Uh, it's just like magic. It's unbelievable stuff. And that's what helps me to, um, well, this is how I do things. I mean, I use this predictive system to form a good position. And that's what helps me for uh, to live my, uh, my current lifestyle, which is, you know, I, basically I live the laptop lifestyle these days. I just travel the world 
and I, I you know I trade uh, like 30 minutes a day, sometimes one hour a day. I don't need more than that. And I can establish very strong positions, both in the long term, both uh, in the medium term. In this case, I think the market is going to go up, probably going to go up, right? I mean, nothing is, you know, nothing is 100%, you know, bulletproof. I also make mistakes. I, I get it wrong sometimes. The setup make mistakes. I mean, sometimes the setup itself, I mean, it's very rare. But sometimes it price doesn't respect the setup itself. Uh, you know, stuff happens. But uh, you want to be on the right side of the statistics, right? I mean, you want you want to be on the right side of the probability, and that's what it gives me. It gives me a huge advantage from a probability uh, point of view. So uh, right now, judging from what happened across that level, I predict that price is going to give us another upside leg, and only then maybe, maybe, right? not clear yet it's going to go probably like something like that. probably take the previous high and then give us probably another drop it could go on and then just be you know after it finishes up the sow is moving then it could actually break lower and go into that uh you know expected so to speak but only that only at that point i will know that the, the market is really bearish at the moment as far as i'm concerned it is sideways rather than bearish, all right? It, it is a sideways correction. All right, so uh, there you go. Um, we got, uh, we got uh, the, the stock market in place as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about, um, let's talk about the Forex market, right? This is the by far the most, um, you know, I cherish the Forex market uh, the most. I mean, I grew up on that market. I love that market. I mean, I do see the crypto market as uh, as a challenger in the sense it behaves a little differently, you know. When you take the crypto market, uh, it's a different animal. It's a different animal. Uh, there's no margin, you know, margin trades. Uh, you actually buy and hold the coin itself, uh, so there's no leverage. Um, there's, there's, there's a whole as different aspects. I mean, you, you go mostly long on the crypto market, mostly. Uh, like, just like in the stock market, where in the forex market, it doesn't really matter where you go. It's completely symmetrical, right? You, it's 50, you know, you can either go up or down, it doesn't matter. So different elements here in the forex market. So it's, it's really interesting to use both uh, in, in different angles, kind of, so to speak. Uh, I look at the crypto market more of an investment, long-term type of uh, uh, an endeavor. While the forex market is more, you know, we usually use it more for medium term perspective, getting more uh, quick, quicker profits, uh, both up and down, you know. Uh, but the, the method, the methodology is, is it remains the same. It's very much the same uh, with all markets. For example, well, I, when I start, uh, you know, analyzing a, a particular pair, for instance, the dollar versus the Canadian, right? One, one of my favorites by far. And it's one of my favorites mostly because it follows an, an, an a remarkable, a remarkable uh, symmetric setup on the grand scale, on the grand scale. It, and it's very good to have that on the grand scale because that gives you uh, the idea of the underlying trend, which is, you know, the, the major underlying trend. You want to have that in your back, in the back of your mind. Not necessarily to trade on it. I'm not, you know, I'm not. A, this is for investor, and this is really long-term stuff. I'm not suggesting you you would, you know, you would short the dollar Canadian at the 140 here and wait until it hits the lower part of the setup. That could take a few years. What I'm suggesting is that you know the direction of the grand trend, so you can look for selling setups on a lower time scale. So, for example. I noticed this huge sideways movement starting to form, right? This huge, huge, um, you can track it back all the way to 2007, right? Just before the crash. So um, basically what I do is when I notice this one leg going up, a second leg going down and third leg starting to form, I know that I have my sideways movement in place. That's where I apply the setup, right? The symmetric setup. So we go one, two, and all the way up three. Now take a look at that. This is the most remarkable stuff you'll ever see. Price 
just uh, you know it was trading at some point in this month 600 pip outside of the setup but as the month got closer and closer to the end it went all the way back just leaving this huge spike on the bar on the top right and going back and closing back inside now that is a huge huge indication that we're going to have a full-fledged downside reversal meaning a full-fledged downside trend in this case such as since it's just such a wide range you're looking at you know 4,000 pip, right? 4,000 pip. Now, let's 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 get things in perspective again. We're talking about the few, the longer perspective, the long-term perspective, uh, with uh, the suggestion that price will end up at the one parity level again. Take a look. That's the C-matrix setup. Now, it, it, I didn't set that. You know, I didn't set it. Uh, set this way like mani manipulatively this is just the way it, it is this is this, it is remarkable stuff I found it to, I find it to be quite striking that the symmetric level symmetric level here happens to fall exactly at the one parity but uh, that's the way it is so I think price will eventually hit that level but it is the monthly chart we, we can't open a trade and put our you know take profit order at one that's not the way it works so I have to go on a smaller scale, find a smaller symmetric setup to basically to look for a dual, well, that's what I call dual time frame setup, to look for a combination of setups. Let's take a look at that. So I need to go, in this case, I will go to the weekly chart, right? I'll go to the weekly chart. Um, there you go. So here, I find another setup. I find another sideways movement. And that's what happens all the time. Take a look at this. This one here and then a second one. Now take a look. I'm talking about the black setup, right? That's a local uh, smaller scale setup where we have the first leg, second leg hits exactly the minimum level because what happens in these setups, right? In this symmetric setup is where you have four lines and basically you have three parts. You have the upper part, you have the middle part, and have the lower part. So price always goes uh, between these two levels in between because it always goes from, from one part, the lower part, to the upper part, and vice versa. But it will always hit the minimum level necessary to generate a full leg. You see this here? So we had first leg, second leg, all the way up, third leg. Doesn't uh, doesn't surprise me where it hits exactly the ups, you know, the upper most upper level here, the, the last level of resistance, 3118, and it just touches base with it. It doesn't close above it because if it did, it would probably mean that we're breaking out. Since it didn't, it probably means that we're going to have another downside leg, right? See how much value I give you here? This is uh, this is just a prediction, right? I'm not uh, I'm not giving you you know old case studies that uh, easy to find and easy to you know spot and uh, present. That's not the way I work. So there you go. Actually, I have a position in Dow Canadian, a short position. I believe it's going to go all the way, not only to the level necessary to accomplish a full downside leg in this downside system, which is 2263. I believe since it took the previous high on that upside movement, it's going to do the same on the previous low. So we're going to probably hit the 121 level again. Now, from the greater perspective, here's what I expect. I expect price to have a second attempt on that level that it failed to break, 2116. Take a look, this blue level. This is a major, major C matrix level that it's already hit in previously. Take a look. I actually had a staggering position here. Uh, I had a staggering short position all the way to 129, 121.16, believe it or not. At that point, it was, you know, expected that price was going to be completely turned off its course because that's a huge level. But I don't think it's going to, you know, completely change the direction of the trend. Not at all. I just think that was a temporary, uh, you know, temporary uh, block to the downside movement, to the downside momentum. So right now, here's what I believe is happening. We have another setup, right? Another one, two, three, and we're about to hit with the fourth leg, as I've mentioned before. So I'm going to go with this one all the way to 121 again. 
Then once we have a monthly close below the 121.16, I will know the price is ready to cover the rest of the way to one. All right, let's have a look at another uh, really nice case uh, case that I have here, the Nasdaq US dollar. I have a bullish position. Uh, you can actually see it. It's live right now. Um, and this is how I work, by the way. Um, I, I do different, I mean, I mean, I mean, basically what I believe in terms of, you know, to be a successful trader, you have to, uh, you have to focus on three pillars, three pillars. You have to have a strong, solid, um, predictive system, or you can call it support and resistance system, which is, uh, you, there are many, right? There are many. Uh, I actually, I, I found, I, I, have, I ended up by developing my own based on this matrix phenomenon. I developed this uh, symmetric setup. So this is my predictive system. But above that, you got to have a strong risk management system in place. So the setup itself, the symmetric setup itself is, has this risk management system built in it. This is why it's so, it's such a wonderful tool. So I got these two pillars covered. The only thing left is the money management system, right? How you carry your position. Are you averaging down? Are you martingaling? Are you anti-martingaling? You know, uh, maybe you add to your position as price move with you rather than against you. So by the way, this is my management system. This is what I do. I do differently. I, you know, most people will average down, right? I don't average down. I never average down. I do the opposite. I, I, I do the anti-martingale. So for example, I believe the New Zealand dollar is gonna go up, right? I have two portions, uh, two pos I, have, I have two, well, two positions in place, one with the New Zealand dollar, but the other one with the New Zealand Swiss franc, a different story. Anyway, um, it is also a dual time frame setup, right? I have this local setup, take a look, this is on the daily chart, this blue setup, where you can easily see that there is one leg, second, third leg, all the way down and right now I think we are in the making of the fourth leg right going upwards so we we probably get we uh, well to accomplish this leg price needs to get to this level 73 74 so this is a secondary target of mine but I mentioned I also mentioned that I'm a position trader right I don't aim for 50 or 100 pip I mean I can take a hundred pip I can uh, partial execute execute my position. I can use 100 pip as a secondary target, but I have my final destination because I'm a position trader. I most most of the time I will aim at you know 500 pip and above. You know usually a thousand pip even, and this is not uh, this is not no different. So in this case I have the big picture, right? I have the big picture. This is the weekly setup. This is the black setup. The black setup. And here, you know, you have a very well-established sideways movement that is, in fact, overdue, right? It's about to explode. This is like, this is like a volcano right now. It's about to explode, right? The New Zealand US dollar. And here's why I think it's about to explode. So what I do is the art of wave counting. In the symmetric setup, you can count the first leg, you can count the second leg, third leg, all the way up, fourth leg, all the way down fifth, by the way, all the way down fifth leg, I've made a fortune on this movement. Seriously, I took two rounds on this one. This one was the first, then price went all the way up and take a look at this spike right on the money, right? So I knew this was a strong retest to that 73, 37 level. And this is why I took the second round all the way to the previous low. But that's a different story. Uh, uh, you know, the bottom line is that right now we are trading the six leg, which, by the way, also made a great fortune on this upside movement. Because the first segment you can take is the segment coming from the lower part of the setup all the way to the first upper major level, which is this one, 73.37. That's always the major target. But since this is the sixth leg, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something about the sixth leg. The sixth leg happens to be the one that usually breaks out, right? It all, it, it, it's either the fifth leg 
if, it, if we're going to have a full-fledged downside reversal, because price came from below before it entered this consolidation phase. So the fifth leg would completely turn around the whole trend. But if it doesn't break on the fifth and it starts to generate the sixth, then you'll know then it's going to break out to the same direction it came from, right? It came from below, it's going to break out, it's going to break out upwards to the same direction it came from. So I think that this setup is about to explode, basically upwards and all the way up. Now, here's how I gauge the potential movement of this sex leg because I'm suggesting it's going to break up, right? So here's, um, here's where I draw back again to the Fibonacci uh, advanced techniques that I showed you at the beginning, right? Because right now, the setup cannot help me, the symmetric setup cannot help me to determine where is this movement that is going to end because it's outside of the setup. The setup can tell me that there are lots of interesting targets to use as secondary targets, right? The 73.47, there's the 74.97, there's the 76.31, which would be a, you know, a difficult point for price, but it will break it. But it could, you know, you know, enter a side with or a downside correction at that point before it actually breaks it. So the setup gives it's, it's limited in giving me the final destination for this upside movement. That's where I draw the 161.8 projection level, right? The Fibonacci projection 161.8. And here's the secret, and it's a big, big secret. Uh, that no one knows about this. Trust me, just you, uh, right now, you and I, right? So, uh, this, you take a full measurement of the fifth leg, right? And you apply 161.8 projection level. Really easy to do that, and it will place you exactly here at the level of 0 0.8035, and I believe that's the final destination for this upside movement. And it would probably go even further than that, but that would be the safest play you can take. Right, so here's th that's why my price target is right over there at 80.35. Now, not to say that I'm not gonna um, partial execute alongside these small targets that are uh, established by the symmetric setup. Now, in this case, it's a dual time frame, right? We got the big setup, the, the black one, which suggests that we're going to have a, an explosion. And we got a smaller scale. Now, you have to realize that it could be quite confusing in the sense that you think the price should go up, where in fact it will go up, but not in your pace, not in the pace you're thinking of. It would actually do something like this, right? Give us the third leg, then give us the fourth. Would not break upwards, give another leg, fifth, and only then with the sixth it would do such... And upside. So you got to know how to take profit on this placement. Most of the position should be killed. And you should be back on it once price hits back the lower part of the smaller size scale. Or it may actually break through, right? It may actually, it may actually uh, and this, hap this happens to me a lot of, a lot of times. That, uh, that's part of the game, right? I, I mean, uh, nothing to do about that sometimes. I will, I mean, I will look for some kind of signal as price starts to turn around, and then I will take my position out, not all of it, most of it. And then price would, instead of giving me this, you know, this, the, the expected downside lag, it would actually break. So no problem, I, I lost a, a few pips, but right back in again, right back in again, going upwards again, basically rejuvenating the whole buy position. All right, this is the, this is the news on US dollar. Um, I talked a lot. I mean, uh, if you have questions, uh, if you want to stop me for questions or anything like that, feel free. Uh, no problem. Actually, that, that's not a bad idea. Uh, we have a few questions uh, here. First of all, can you hear me, by the way? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Right. Great. By the way, with the, with the dollar card, I'm totally, I'm totally with you. Uh, as you know, we spoke about it a long time ago. One, 130, 131 is a great level for shorts. It's running, it's running, yeah. it's running pretty beautiful. New Zealand, yeah. and I might agree or disagree at this period, but dollar cut, I'm totally yeah. Okay, the question is uh, from Claudio. Claudio asks, oh, well, how, how, how did you call read uh, these levels where you have the different Fibonacci's meeting on the same place? 
Uh, this is the dual, dual, dual time frame. Uh, well, sometimes we have triple time frame. No, sometimes no, when, we can when have... You have this hybrid or something, hybrid. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, uh, hybrid. Uh, this is the, hi uh, the hybrid cluster. What this is the hybrid mean? cluster. Well, you have. <laughs> well, we, we, two call, levels. we call it a bit different. I call it the magnet zone, basically. <laughs> that's like. Oh, yeah, it definitely is. That's exactly what it is. It's a magnet that's zone. Exactly what it is, yes. Yeah. That's, that's, it, it's like, it, yeah. it is a magnet by the market. It takes the price to there. That's the beauty of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, it draws it right. Oh, yeah, yes, that's what I yeah. call magnet zone in uh, in my projections. Yes. Um, now Claudio is asking about the Elliot waves you were presenting. Uh, he says, "Is that Elliot waves?" I've always had difficulties in drawing, counting the lines because I have learned mm -hmm. that the third line cannot be the smallest of the corrective ones. Uh, Claudio, which of the charts? What are you referring to? I think it, I think it refers to the Dow Jones. Maybe it refers to the Dow Jones. What was this? Was right? this one, Claudia? Yes. Exactly. Or maybe it was the Bitcoin. No, no, that was that was it. That was the the Dow Jones. Okay. Right. So um, my answer to that would be uh, that. Uh, the conventional wisdom with regards to Elliott wave is very much problem. I completely threw out the window all of these little principles that I found to be uh, are utterly not true. Uh, you know, uh, they say that, um, for example, uh, the four corrective wave have uh, can't reach the uh, the tip of the first wave and that's not true i saw many places many times that it did and it started to form the fifth leg as it usually does and you know there's another principles which su suggest that the third leg can't be the shortest leg that's also bullshit here's the principle that you have to focus on if it's clear if it's easy to count game is on if it's not completely disregarded because what it will do is it will fail you. So only where I can count the waves very clearly, I think this case is, is a good example, right? I mean, there is a little bit of a bump there, right here, that could be a bit misleading. But in the end of the way, you can see that this downside correction is very much likely in length, I mean, in amplitude, both in price and time, I would say, to this one. So it's easy to see that this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, and this is potentially speaking the fifth. All right, wonderful. Guys, uh, are there any more questions uh, you want to ask Roy currently as yes, for now about uh, anything of the Fibonacci's, uh, uh, the usage, the levels? Uh, Claudio, you are very, very welcome. <laughs> All right, Ray, I think you can continue. Uh, if there will be right. more questions, I will do it uh, sure. later on, okay? Yeah, so let me show you an interesting case study that's also live, live stuff. I, I like to present live stuff. Um, how do I, okay. Um, just a second. Oh, that's it, okay. So uh, uh, just a quick one, yeah, just a quick one uh, to show you how I uh, combine both Fibonacci techniques with the symmetric setup to establish a very profitable position, right? So at first, I noticed that the New Zealand Swiss franc here is starting to trade sideways, right? And that's exactly what I look for, right? That's that's the magical moment where everything happens for me. So I noticed there was a straw, that there was a first leg going down, second leg going up, Third leg was going down and took the previous low. This is exactly the ideal setup that I'm looking for. And this is where I begin to establish a bullish position. But in this case, I started, I always start small because I want to, you know, my money management uh, tactic is to buy as I go, to increase the position as price continues to move my way rather than averaging down. I do the opposite. I wait for a buy day and I add another portion for every bullish, every day that goes with me, I add to the position. Where it goes against me, I actually subtract from the position. This is my money management system in place. 
But uh, there's a risk management system here by the symmetric setup that suggests that price should go all the way to 7180, right? 7180, that's my target. That's the symmetrics level. And also the previous major high, all right? The previous major high because of the nature of the previous major low. Take a look at the low right there. This low, which took the previous one, always will suggest that it will do the same on the upside, that it will go all the way and take the previous high, which is why I aim at the previous high. But I also take notice of this level to be a major secondary target, 7180. But here's how I, this is how I actually made two rounds here. Because at first, I took a, a buy position, price went pretty well towards the upper part of the setup, right? It went pretty well, but it didn't reach the upper part. It didn't reach my target, which was the, the minimum target was 7180. It didn't, instead, it went for a downside correction. So I started to subtract from the position as it went downwards, and it actually broke the 68.60. So at that point, I began to be a little bit worried. You know, I thought I might have to take a big loss, actually, and close the trade. But here's how I was able to save, to be saved by the bail, so to speak, by the Fibonacci technique, right? So what I thought was, what I said was, that the first segment, I mean, let's count the waves, right? We have the first wave right there, the first leg. We have the second leg right there. We have the third leg going down, right? So we are in the making of the fourth leg. But the first upside segment, which was pretty successful going up, followed by a downside correction. So I thought this was probably just a local downside, downside correction to the first segment. How can I know for sure? So here's where you incorporate a second element, which is the corrective, um, the corrective analysis. What I did was I applied from the very big, uh, from the very, uh, from the very uh, bottom to the very top, right? The 76.4, my magical number for corrections. And lo and behold, take a look. This is this falls exactly right here. The 76. Let me take out um, my stock loss level. Could be a bit, um, you know what? Forget about it. Anyway, so take a look at this blue level, the blue dotted line, 7770. That's exactly where the 76.4 falls if you apply the 76.4 from the very bottom here to the very top, which suggests that this was indeed just a correction phase. So when I notice these spikes, on the weekly chart, very important notice, the weekly is very important, very, very strong. So these two spikes here and price started to reverse, I knew that game is on and I'm going to be saved and I don't have to close this trade, but on the, on, on the contrary, I need to increase the trade immediately. And then, of course, it broke the 68.60 and I continued to increase the position and, uh, and I still do. As price continues to move upwards, I will still continue to increase the position until I hit the 7180. At this point, that would be the moment I will start increasing the position and I will start to close the to cash in, to close the position, and we'll try to basically to ride this wave all the way to the previous high. All right. Uh, so that's uh, that's uh, that's another interesting way where I incorporate uh, Fibonacci techniques with the symmetric setup to form this really strong uh, predictive system, uh, which has far above 80% uh, of accuracy. Anyway, um, that's, uh, I think that's, that, that's probably enough for you guys uh, to, uh, to receive in one, uh, in one hour. All I can say is that, uh, you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, it, these, it really, uh, these, it really uh, is, I can confirm that. <laughs> Sorry, it it really is. It's just uh, you know it's it's it, it's it's a part of uh, well from my point of view a wonderful Fibonacci combination. Um, yeah. Well, I, I you know so, yeah I mean I, I work with cycles. I work with uh, the same magnetron ideas combination of different uh, extensions. Fibonacci's when they meet together when they uh, th they are amazing for predictions. They are amazing amazing for the. Uh, um, 
it retraces level oh, yeah. and and and, and oh, yeah. I, I think the, the strongest element in the technical analysis space most likely most likely when you master when you master these fibonaccis it's Kind of amazing. Right. So I think I think the main idea is to remember that uh, the the common and popular usage of the Fibonacci is bound to fail because it's just you know it's everyone knows it everyone uses it you can't expect it to to work perfectly you have to take it a step further. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, there was a question if you have any count on euro dollar pound dollar or pound pound yen if you have any. Um, Anything on the um, no, to be honest, I don't. So here's how I work, uh, and it's interesting. It's an interesting question. Basically, I don't pick the opportunities. The opportunities pick me. It's it's. <laughs> I'm deadly. I'm deadly serious. I'm deadly serious. I just look for the phenomenon. I look for the setup. I look for the sideways movement on the grand scale, like the weekly on the monthly, and then I know that I can break the particular legs and use them as whole trends and base my position on them. And in, in many cases, there is nothing that I can do about, there's nothing I can use. So I, I, I try very, very carefully never to force an analysis, mm -hmm. right? Never force analysis. I, I just, I want the, the, the setups to find me and to, just to scream, here I am. That's, that's where I go. That's Sometimes that's it will be on the Euro dollar. Yeah, sometimes it would be at the euro, and I would have many, many multiple opportunities on the euro for months, like for six months or so. But then it would go completely silent for like a year, yep. you know? Yep. But I will have great opportunities somewhere else, like in the dollar CAD, in the New Zealand dollar, in the euro CAD, in the euro pound, stuff like that. Yep. But right now, nothing on the pound yen, nothing on the pound dollar, nothing on the euro dollar. Sorry about that. No problems. Uh, next question is coming from Ivana. Uh, which other two symmetric levels are used apart from 161.8 and 076.4? Oh, that is the grand question, right? That's the million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? That can actually lead me to, uh, to the course itself. I mean, I actually designed the full fledged course that will explain in great detail this whole amazing methodology and it is amazing i can i, uh, so, I can, I can uh, uh, say proudly i'm one of the first to go over all your videos and very well done for that yeah yeah i mean i have i have a huge respect for that you know uh, and i appreciate that you were uh, one of the smart guys to uh, to pick it up which is great i mean this is why i'm saying i'm i'm, I'm great i have great honor to work with you man and uh, great i mean yeah sure but uh, you know, so I I I I I build up this huge course because it's a huge topic, and you can't really you know you can't the scope of this webinar is far too small. You uh, you have to build it up. You have to well, not only that, but uh, to practice the theory first. You have to absorb the theory, get to know uh, the methodology, but then uh, you know feel comfortable with it, trade on it practice on it first probably demo then a little bit of you know small money and stuff like that so i actually build that uh, i build a full uh, you know a comprehensive course that touches you know that basically connects all the dots we start with the first module uh which is really some of you guys probably can uh, can skip this one but also I, I actually believe that there are a few nice really nice pointers even for advanced traders but this is where just to you know to start to to to, to put the basics to put the uh, you know funding uh, blocks here the, the the fundamental blocks. Then we go to the mod the second module and we actually step up right. We start to step up uh, and uh, let's talk about a little bit about technical analysis in its you know its basic formation it's in its common sense and the way it doesn't why it doesn't work why why it doesn't work why it's misleading and the solutions for it. Then we're really stepping up the game. We're really getting into the serious stuff. Uh, on the third module, uh, the building blocks of the Fibonacci methodology, basic principles, also Elliott Wave, uh, advanced Fibonacci techniques also. So these are the, really the building blocks of the symmetrics. Uh, the, and the four, from that point on, this is probably half of the course. 
Uh, we're talking about a uh, thousand minutes of recording, right? That's a huge course, uh, a little over than a hundred videos, uh, small videos, but still lots of lots of material. So at the fourth module, we start to uh, to become masters here, right? We start to learn all of the. There's a mathematical frame of work behind the C matrix. It's not arbitrary. It's not randomly. It is a complete system based on mathematical frame of work. So it's really interesting uh, to learn more about that. Then, of course, uh, we start to uh, to uh, to apply the C matrix. We, we start to witness this uh, this phenomenon in action, uh, where we, we we start to identifying to identify the the promising opportunities. This is why I said this is the million dollar question, right? How what's the numbers? What's the values? And how to actually find the setup, how to actually find the, the pattern, the formation, and take advantage of the system. Uh, later on, we'll go to the module five, symmetric risk management tactics and master for master trades. Basically, uh, as I've said, you gotta have uh, three pillars, right? You gotta have the first pillar, which is a strong uh, predictive system. The second pillar is the risk management. Luckily for us, the risk management system here is built in within the symmetric. So I talk. A lot about that and how to take advantage of uh, risk management uh, and last but not least of course um, uh, some more money management tactics some correlation analysis that I use mostly in the foreign exchange market and uh, some more money management tactics that I use uh, and I did mention uh, the, the way I do things instead of uh, averaging down I do the opposite so that's another way that that's called scaling in by the way scaling in that's the tactic that I use from the money management point of view. Uh, so it, it is a great course and uh, it holds lots of value. Like I said, uh, it, re it, re it really, uh, it really, really, value. really is. And that's, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm very proud to be the first, one of the first <laughs> to be involved in, <laughs> in this one. Ray, a few more questions, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, keep, sure. Keep, keep coming is about the time frames. Uh, um, yeah. How are the C matrix levels calculated, and can they be applied to lower time frames, like daily, four hour? Oh, one hour. absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. You can use it on the one minute chart. Just don't expect the same results. You have to understand. Um, you have to understand the nature of smaller movements, right? The, the fast movements, uh, as opposed to the big movements. Uh, so basically, I'm talking about you have to understand the nature of uh, and the differences between the one minute, five minute, 10 minute, 15 minute chart uh, as opposed to the daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, it is it works. It works beautifully on the one minute, on the all, all the time frames, but it's much more noisy. You can't rely on it. Meaning it could break, it could have, it will give you lots of false breakout, lots of false because they cannot be confirmed. They can only be confirmed by the daily close. The daily close is sort of the equilibrium between the buyers and the sellers by the end of the day. It is a very important element. And even more so, the weekly close. So those elements are the confirmation that you look for in, in terms of uh, breakouts or tipping points, which is most, like, most what, we, what we're looking for. So uh, you can use it on the shorter term time frame, but it would be much noisier, much more misleading, and much tougher to make money. Obviously, you can see that uh, if I'm uh, if 16 years later, I'm still uh, working on the daily and weekly charts. I uh, I probably found it to be most uh, most effective. That's you know what I I, I I have to say here something if you don't mind. Um, most of the traders think that. You know, the, the more you trade, the more you make. Yeah. The, the more, the yeah. more uh, you, you always have to be involved. You always have to be there. You yeah. You have to be yeah. doing. It took me so many years. It took uh, me so many years to get rid of that notion, you know? Uh, well, I, I know. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm yeah. exactly on the same place. Um, Absolutely. That, 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 Absolutely. That, you that, over -trade. You end up over trading very, very easily. You're putting a lot of mental stress on yourself, not enough time to live, and it only drives you to make ba more bad and bad decisions. That's what happens. Yep. Uh, okay, there's one more question. Uh, it's actually two for me. Is uh, C Matrix has to do anything with the Traders Academy Club? No. We, me and Roy work completely differently. Roy working uh, in his Fibonacci's. 
I'm working in the Traders Academy Club with the cycles and the divergence convergence principles. Yes, there are Fibonacci's involved, of course, in terms of cycles, because Fibonacci is the nature of the prices. We can take it off or on. <laughs> that, that's how it works. That's the money flow. Uh, from it's the basics. So it's completely it's different. The basics. Okay. Uh, there is one more question. Uh, to finish with the trade on the same day, which time frame uh, you use for analysis? That's a good question, actually. For those who um, I never go below the daily close because nothing is reliable below the daily close. Even the daily close is some not, sometimes not very reliable, so I have to confirm it with the weekly close. But I never go below the daily close um, in terms of uh, you know reference. Okay, and let me just make sure uh, there is no misses there. Uh, Jalal saying it's the first time I see analyzing using 071 as last uh, defenses. Uh, interesting, I like it. Thank you, Jalal. I think it was not 071, right? It was 076.4. 76.4. Uh, uh, yeah, 76.4. That's the yeah. medical number. Uh, the, the, but uh, on the on the higher time frames, there will be there will be slight. Uh, uh, difference in uh, in uh, that. So um, Ray, thank you very much for um, being here. Adit Adit Yaraj, if you have any personal questions, you can always ask uh, uh, my, my support team. And also, if you have any questions to Ray on a personal view, uh, Ray is available for you guys. On well, I, I think I think the best way will be when I upload the the video. Okay, uh, I will include the contact details of Roy in yeah. uh, in the description. Sure. So because Absolutely. right now it's like I, I don't see any, any way to uh, upload it here. Um, so right. I will include the contact emails and the Skype of Roy guys for you in the description in the YouTube link that uh, will be created for you. Uh, right. The C matrix also would the if you want to learn more on that if you are if you are interested in the fibonacci if it's talking to you and it makes sense to you and you want to learn exactly what Roy did Roy, by the way uh did uh, can you can, can you mention uh, Roy, the how to get the how to get your course because you did a very big favor for the community with uh, with with the with accepting yeah, the sure. lower price absolutely and, and yeah I, definitely so you just click on um, uh, cmatrix.com, cmatrix academy. Sorry, cmatrixacademy.com. Um, they will send you to um, uh, to the uh, to the you know to the uh, to the homepage. Uh, you can register uh, and uh, basically start the course. It's uh, you, you know it's a big course, very comprehensive. So uh, you might as well take it uh, you know slowly. Uh, and uh, if you need to uh, just do uh, videos all over again, if you need to, uh, you know, uh, to clarify stuff. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, it's a journey. It's a journey. Uh, once you get the theory up and running, you want to go to practice a little bit and start feeling, you know, comfortable in the skin of the C matrix. And then it just comes part of your uh, trading methodology. Very, very true. There is a question for me, and I have to answer that, is the... Symmetric idea can be used in the cycles. The answer is 100% yes. They both. Oh yeah, it's a cyclical. It's a cyclical analysis. That's exactly. what it is. Exactly. Just from different perspective and uh, from different. Absolutely. Levels. The magnets are the magnets. Uh, uh, the measurements are different. Yes, or he has his own approach in the ranges, uh, um, creating the ranges. Uh, and right. Well, I admire that. I have to admit that this, this was never my uh, professionality. I could never uh, find better way to deal with ranges. Uh, um, well, well done. That's all. Thank Guys, you, my friend. Uh, Claudia, thank, thank you, my friend. you very much. It was a wonderful experience. Claudia, thank you very much for uh, for being here. Uh, Vladimir, it was a pleasure for me too, guys. Thank you. Thanks for your wonderful comments, guys. Uh, Ray, thanks a lot for being here, mate. And uh, I'll, I'll Thank you, guys. Thank you. It was a pleasure in Ontario again <laughs> when it's when it's yeah warm. definitely we'll see you then <laughs> all right guys uh, hi to the family guys thank you very much for being here I wish wonderful uh, evening night and uh, continuation of the week this video will be uploaded uh, later today I will send you by email the um, access to the video so you can come and rewatch the um, for your convenience. 
And once again, thanks for that. Already thanks for the experience. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. All the best to everyone. Bye for now.